Um, hello everyone, I'm Ethan Sun and I'm from San Diego. So the drive here was pretty long, um, two and a half hours. Um, lots of traffic, but I'm excited that I'm here. Um, this is my project, it's called Trustworthy AI, Adversarial Attacks and Defensive Strategies in Self-Driving Systems Using Computer Vision and Artifi Artificial Intelligence. Um, this is a quick abstract, a quick summary of my project. So my project focuses on enhancing autonomous vehicle safety against cyber attacks through precise stop sign detection using AI. Um, to do this, I utilized YOLO architecture variants, including YOLO V5 MU, YOLO V8 from RoboFlow, and YOLO V8 S from Ultralytix, with YOLO V8 from RoboFlow proving most effective. But I did um, test many different YOLO architecture variants. Um, the development involves calibrating AI systems to reliably detect stop signs, and it's crucial for safe autonomous vehicle operation. Um, I created six different data set versions with, over 46, with some versions over 46,535 images featuring manually crafted cyber attack simulations to comprehensively assess systems pre precision. Um, my model is able to achieve up to 90% accuracy in stop sign classification confidence, showcasing the effectiveness of YOLO V8 model and comprehensive data sets even in challenging conditions. The highlights it highlights critical role of it highlights the critical role of computer vision techniques and extensive data sets in bolstering autonomous vehicle safety against cyber threats. And finally, the review underscores project success in advancing trustworthy AI and vehicle safety through innovative use of YOLO V8 model and targeted data sets. So here are some quick facts about autonomous vehicles. 90% um, of car accidents are caused by human error. Um, however, self-autonomous cars can reduce car accidents by 34%. The problem with that is that the market adoption of self-driving vehicles o is only projected to be 5% by 2030, and the reason for that is because of the skepticism behind self-driving cars. 56% of Americans remain skeptical about self-driving vehicles, um, and that's fair because in, the pa in 2023, cyber attacks have surged over 600%. So here's some background research I did to create my model to detect cyber attacks. Um, a critical challenge in the development of self-driving cars is ensuring their ability to accurately perceive and react to the environment. Many cyber attacks, although seemingly minor, can have significant repercussions, including the potential to cause accidents or disrupt traffic systems. And here you can see some examples of cyber attacks. Um, it's, there's um, like pixels on it or words on it that help um, try to disrupt the system of the self-autonomous vehicle. Um, this, is special, this is especially pertinent in such scenarios where external factors such as vandalized road signs or subtle cyber attacks can compromise the vehicle sensors and decision-making algorithms. And such attacks aim to deceive the AI algorithms responsible for interpreting sensor data, potentially leading to catastrophic outcomes. Um, and like I said, these are some common cyber attack scenarios to self-driving machine learning. Um, and then this is the solution I found to the problem. Um, in addressing the challenges posed by cyber attacks on autonomous vehicle sensors, the proposed solution involves a multi-layered approach leveraging advanced deep learning techniques, anomaly detection, and data augmentation. The solution aims to enhance the resilience of image detection systems with a particular fo focus on improving traffic sign recognition in various adversarial scenarios. So over here is a diagram of, stop, of the stop sign recognition model based on computer vision algorithm. So basically there is noise created on these signs um, to try to mis, like, misguide the system and make it misclassify a sign as something else. And that could have really harmful outcomes. And then here is the architecture of YOLO V5, which is one of the models that I tested. Um, the YOLO X model, um, here I'll talk more about um, YOLO, and it stands for You Only Live Once. It's an algorithm, um, a machine learning algorithm that can help create models. Um, and the YOLO X model is an advancement in object detection, surpassing previous versions of YOLO in performance. It incorporates several key innovations. Firstly, it employs an anchor free mechanism which simplifies the detection process by reducing the number of design parameters and predictions per image, enhancing efficiency. Additionally, YOLO X uses a concept called multi positives, which optimizes high quality predictions to balance the training process. Finally, the SIMOTA feature in Yellow X involves advanced label assignments, considering factors like loss slash quality awareness and sensor prior to enhance detection accuracy. Um, over here is an illustration of the difference between the Yellow V3 head and the proposed decoupled head. And then here is a computer vision neural network training architecture processing. So this is kind of the, what Yellow looks like. 
Um, so the statement of purpose, um, the project seeks to create an AI solution enhancing the cybersecurity of self-driving vehicles by improving image detection capabilities to more accurately identify and neutralize anomalies and adversarial attacks, such as traffic signs. My hypothesis was, if our model is used on a self-driving car, then it should be able to detect if a traffic sign has undergone a cyber attack, because with the given data set, it recognizes the subtle differences between a regular traffic sign and one that has been cyber attacked. And then here you can kind of see, um, if you put in raw data and then an attack happens, it go through the defense and then go to the model and then it'll have a prediction of what they th um, the model thinks the sign is. Um, and then this is the procedure and how I created my model. Um, first, I wanted to define what a cyber attack was. Um, and defining what a cyber attack was um, is really important because it, um, I needed to understand the threshold at which a per perturbation becomes significant enough to mislead the sensor. Um, here is an equation, um, a math equation that kind of depicts that. Um, the threshold T is the smallest amount by which the given sensor input X shifts such that the, result, the resulting perturbation is different from without perturbation. So P X plus delta, that is the perturbation plus a, um, plus a, or the delta is the perturbation by the attacker and P is the, um, the perception. So P X would be the perception um, of a normal input X and then this is with um, a perturbation done on X. So that's the perception of it with that. And um, the purpose of a cyber attack is for it to be subtle enough so that, that's why there's a minimum here and it's subtle enough so that's, um, the human can look past that the sign is being attacked. However, it would be dangerous enough to manipulate the system. So over here, I have an example of a cyber attack. Um, if you looked at this right here, you would think that this is a normal stop sign. If you were driving, you could still detect that it's a normal stop sign. However, because of all the pixels on here, it might um, mess with the system. And that's why um, this, the purpose of the cyber attack is so that you can mess with the system without causing too much suspicion to the human eye. Um, and then second, I needed to collect the data um, and collect scenarios that will train the model to be able to recognize and respond to cyber attacks. Um, gamma C is a fraction that quantifies how comprehensively the set C represents the range of possible scenarios. Um, so C right here is the data set and um, gamma C would be the scenario covered by the data set over all the total possible scenarios. Um, and then next, I wanted to augment and label the data. Um, the data needs to be pre-processed so that the model can use it to train. Um, and then here is the math equation for that. Um, the augmentation is equal to all of the augmentations being done on it, which is like X prime, X double prime. That's all the different augmentations that can be done on it. And the augmentations can be in forms of rotation, scaling, noise, and um, yeah, that's represented by these right here. Um, and then here is the process of labeling it. Um, this is done on RoboFlow. Here is a uh, one of the cyber attacks of a stop sign, um, and I would label it as either a stop sign or a cyber attack. And then here is a snapshot of the data set um, with images of both cyber attacks and normal stop signs. Um, and the next um, is training the model. Um, the data is put under the YOLO V8 architecture to train and identify patterns or labels. Um, and this is um, the YOLO model depicted, and then this is Bellman's equation, which is kind of how um, YOLO works and how machine learning kind of works. So V here is the value function, um, estimating the expected returns from state S. So V S factorial, S factorial or S exclamation mark is the next state after taking action A. So um, this would be the value after taking next action. And then um, this right here is the, um, the reward after taking action A on a state S. Um, and basically what happens, it, it keeps, it's like an iterative, like recursive uh, function that um, keeps adding on um, and keeps like learning based off um, what's it, what it's given. Um, and then here, um, the next step was to test the model. Um, and here is the mean average precision, and that's equal to this, um, which I'll go over a little bit more later, but this is the true positive over the false positive plus the true positive, so it's kind of like, and then a summation of all of that's to um, find the mean, and then because it's an average, you'd also divide by the number of classes. Um, so that gives the mean average precision and um, how accurately the model works. And um, I used base images to test the accuracy and consistency of model, and then I compared it with other models. So these are the four base images I used. Um, this first one is a normal stop sign. Um, the second one is neither a stop sign or a cyber attack because 
Um, a cyber attack would mean that it's subtle enough that a human would look past it, but this obviously a human would see an issue in that too. There's no words at all. Um, image three is a normal cyber attack. It's got um, it's got words here, love and hates to try to mess with the system. However, a human would normally look past this. And then finally is a slow sign, which carries the shape of an, of a stop sign, the octagon. However, it is not a stop sign, so that's meant to trick the model. Um, and then here is the last step, um, and that is model accuracy verification with the robot self-driving car, which I have brought here. Um, and basically, there's an on-device computer vision algorithm, so I inputted my best model into the car, and then um, a real-time detection analysis and adaptive learning and data collection. So, um, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. And then I used these two stop signs that I made. Um, this first one, on the right is a normal stop sign, and then this is a stop sign that has gone through a cyber attack, which I talked about before. Um, and then basically I coded it so that um, once it detected a cyber attack, it would mention that it detected a cyber attack, and then it also output the confidence at which it is a cyber attack, and then the same for the stop sign detected. So I have a video showing, um, showing what it's like, basically. Um, here is the, the robot car, which he's past, um, showing around right now. Um, and then that is when it's a stop sign, and I basically coded it so that once it detected a stop sign, um, the lights would flash yellow. Um, so here you can see that it actually de de depicts the normal stop sign as a normal stop sign. And then this is um, when it runs on a cyber attack, and I coded it so that it outputted it red, or the color turned red. And um, as you can see, it's able to accurately depict the cyber attack as a cyber attack. Um, yeah, that's the video. And then um, here are some results um, that I found from my different models that I've tested. Um, and here's a comparison between two different computer vision models. Um, this one is YOLO V8 version 6, and this one is my best version. And then this one is one of the worst ones, YOLO V5 MU. Um, and here you can see a graph depicting um, like the confidence at which it detected different signs. So um, if I go back here, um, image one is this one, the normal stop sign. Image two is the one that's neither. Image three is a cyber attack, and image four is neither. So if you look at this one, um, you can see that image one and image three, it confidently is able to detect it as a stop sign and a cyber attack um, respectively. But image two, um, it's neither, because look how 50-50 it is. It really is, it, and it accurately depicts, detects the blank stop sign as neither of them. Um, and then finally, the slow sign. 56% um, confident, that's not enough to um, be confident enough that it is a stop sign. So it, this version was able to, um, this model was able to accurately detect each sign. Um, and then here is one of the worst ones, and you can see that image one and image three, it was accurately able to um, detect as a stop sign and a cyber attack, but image two, it said it was a stop sign while it was definitely not a stop sign. And then image four, it said it was a cyber attack even though it wasn't a stop sign at all, it was a slow sign. And then here is the average and all the models I tested of um, each like each base image and the average. So the average you can see here is 85.7. So the best model is 95. So that's a lot higher. Image two, averagely it did pretty good. Um, it's neither. And then image three, the average is 83. And then this one I think is 89. And then the last image um, on average, it was also pretty low. So that means that was good too. Um, and then here are some graphs that were created after I created these models. Um, so like I said before, mean average precision, which I talked about a little before, is the average precision across multiple levels of confidence thresholds. Um, and it provides a single value that summarizes the overall performance of a model. So here's the graph of the mean average precision. Um, and the performance increases as more epochs. And basically an epoch is how many times the model runs through the single data set. So you can see that obviously if you run through the model more times, then the, ac the precision would get higher. But at one point it does flatline because um, no matter how many times you run it, you've already reached like a maximum precision. Um, and then box loss, which is this graph right here, is a component of the total loss that penalizes the model for errors in predicting the coordinates of bounding boxes. So if I go back here, um, there would be a box here. Um, and box loss is basically everything that's outside of that and it got wrong. So you can see that it's getting lower. And then class loss is another component of the total loss that indicates performance on predicting class. 
And that, you can see that once you run more epochs, it gets much lower, and that's good. And then object loss um, is another component that penalizes the model for failing to detect and classify objects present in the grid cell. And um, you can see that box loss and object loss are a little bit more fluctuating, but class loss um, got lower, so it did a good job in detecting the class. Um, and then here's the confusion matrix for YOLO V8. Um, I talked a, lot of bit, a little bit about this before, the true positive and the false positive. So over here is if it's a stop sign and it accurately depicts as a stop sign, so that's 84%. And then here is um, if it's a cyber attack and then it accurately depicts it as a cyber attack and that's 40%. And this one's the worst, one of the worst models by the way. This one's, this one's the better one. But um, yeah, and then 4% is if it's, um, it's really a cyber attack but it detects it as a stop sign. And then 1% here is if it's a stop sign and it accurate or inaccurately depicts as a cyber attack. So this is one of the bad ones. And then this is the best one. You can see 98% times would accurately depict it as a stop sign. 90% it um, get it correct as a cyber attack. 4% it confuse it, confuse a cyber attack as a stop sign, and then 2% it confuses a stop sign as a cyber attack. Um, and here are some more graphs. Some more here are some more graphs. Um, of the second best model, which is actually the model used in here, um, because the first model was not able to be imported into there. Um, but this is the second best model, and um, here are some graphs that, um, the same graphs, the mean average precision graphs, um, the box loss, class loss, and object loss. You can see that the box loss, object loss, all the three losses were able to go down pretty nicely um, the more epochs I ran. Um, and same as the mean accuracy, mean mean average precision, which was able to um, go up the more epochs I ran. Um, and then here's some other data like um, recall precision and a few other things. But you can see that it gets better as more times the model runs through the data sets. And then here is a comparison of V5, which is the bad one, and V8. Um, we've seen enough of these graphs, so. Okay, and then here's a, um, a summary of like the social impacts um, of, our, of, of the model. Um, and basically it kind of works as a flywheel effect. So Argus Vision AI, which is a name I made for it. But um, basically first it, or it's more of like a cycle, so there's not really a first step, but it enhanced the public safety of um, like road accidents and driving on the road. And then it built trust um, and then it would set new standards, and because it's a flywheel effect, it'd go back and enhance public safety, and then it's a continuous loop. So that's kind of what the, um, the model is able to do. It's able to continuously enhance public safety and set new standards for um, like vehicles, self-driving vehicles on the road. And then here's a quick conclusion, um, a quick summary of what I talked about. So various methodologies were employed to address challenges of cyber attacks on autonomous vehicle sensors. Um, the definition and classification of a cyber attack is crucial in shaping diverse training sets for AI models. Um, data sets ranged from a few dozen to over 46,000 images, pivotal in training AI models. Um, and I didn't talk about this yet, but I had six different um, data sets, and my last data set had around 100 because all of those were handpicked, while the 46,000 one was combining um, old data, or combining data sets I found online with some few images I found myself. But I found that it was better to handpick the images um, rather than find ones online and be able to label it myself. Um, and then the version six, which is like data set version six, that data set demonstrated remarkable ability to recognize normal and manipulated traffic signs with up to 90% accuracy. The selection and optimization of YOLO V8 model from RoboFlow critical, is critical for superior performance and recognizing and classifying stop signs accurately. Um, the project's uniqueness, uniqueness lies in its focus on recognizing cyber attacks on traffic signs in autonomous vehicle domain. Um, it sets foundation for protect, protective countermeasures in AI-assisted society, like, the, like I talked about here. Um, and then it represents significant advancement in trustworthy AI for autonomous vehicles. It highlights potential of advanced computer vision models and comprehensive data sets in enhancing safety and reliability of autonomous vehicle systems. And finally, it provides insights for further advancements in protecting autonomous vehicles from evolving cyber threats. And then here are some references I use. I had more references, but this is just a few of them. And yeah, that's it for my presentation. Yeah, um, does anyone have any questions? And uh, 
kids. If I see hands up, I'll take the kids first, so. Um, don't self-driving cars use like um, Google Maps and so they get the information from Google Maps to figure out where the stop signs are and that way it doesn't use AI? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that is definitely true. Um, yeah, like Teslas, for example, would use Google Maps in like knowing where some stop signs are. But um, sometimes when I find that I'm driving, the stop sign does not appear on Google Maps. So there are definitely moments where it would not be able to find, because not all stop signs are mapped on Google Maps, yeah. But that is definitely a factor that it's worth mentioning. How long did this project take? Um, I think I worked on this project for a couple months. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of steps in it. Um, it definitely was not an easy project, but yeah, it definitely took a couple months. What was your favorite part about it? Um, my favorite part about it was probably the um, working on the robot car right here, because um, I was able to like actually see it happen um, in person, and I thought that was really cool. Really great talk, by the way, so thank you for um, I have yeah, a question when you're you. showing the confusion matrix of the false positives and yeah, false negatives. Of course. So uh, for some applications such as autonomous driving, those false positives and false negatives may not be accurate enough. Right. So what would your plan be for improving accuracy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I definitely would um, improve my data set, um, first of all. Um, I definitely expand the data set because right now it's not the biggest, but um, yeah, expanding the data set would make it more accurate and then also testing different models. Um, I tested eight different models, but um, I definitely would test more models in order to decrease these. Thank you. Uh, earlier, like, how would the cyber attacks happen? Like, would it, like, uh, mm -hmm. attack the visuals of the, a, of the sensors, or would they actually mess with the physical stop signs? Right. It could be both. Like, um, for example, this right here, like this is obviously physical, but um, also hackers can get into the systems of um, the sensors and both of them can happen, yeah. But they both have the same result of like, sorry, um, they both have the same result of like messing with the stop sign and it, yeah. Okay, that's your what, like, what circuit board did you use? What, sorry, what? What circuit board? Circuit board? Um, I, I'm not completely sure about that. I used um, Raspberry Pi for the self-autonomous vehicles, the, the car over here, I put a Raspberry Pi, which is basically like a computer, and I imported the model in there, so that's what I made, yeah. Did you study stop signs under other real world uh, applications, like rain, fog, that kind of stuff? Oh, no? yeah, I added a few images um, that included like stop signs, like during the night, for example, or like fog, rain, but yeah, I mean, definitely like the question before, if I wanted to improve my data set and like decrease the false positives, false negatives, then I definitely would look more into that, yeah. Anyone else? How, how long does the analysis take? Um, so, f yeah, I actually collected some information about that. So on this real car, I mean, if I did it on the computer, it'd take only like, like one or two seconds, but obviously when you have it in real life, it's harder because the car's moving and stuff like that. But um, on average, it took like four to like nine seconds. It kind of depended on how the car's feeling because it is a little inconsistent. Anyone else? Okay, let's thank our speaker again, please. That was a fantastic thank you. talk. Thank you so much.